introduce Mr. Guillaume Leleu and Mr. Emmanuel de Chateau Thierry. So Mr. Guillaume Leleu has more than nine years of experience working in the defense industry, uh, leveling up systems engineering techniques, methods and tools for systems and systems of systems development and design driven, driven by simulations. He is also a seasoned enterprise architect for driving business transformation with a solid background as a technology evangelist, subject matter expert in services, microservices, and stream-based oriented architecture. His colleague, Mr. Emmanuel de Chateau-Thierry, is a shipbuilding engineer at Naval Group and a mechanical engineer. Actually, I, I think Emmanuel is not going to uh, present today, but he is in the same room as Guillaume and, and contributed for a significant part of this presentation. And without further ado, Guillaume, Emmanuel, I leave the stage to you. Can you please uh, start sharing your screen? And also, uh, yeah, don't forget to, to unmute your microphone and, and start your webcam if you can. Yeah, great. Right. Thank you, Stefan, for the introduction. You're can welcome. you hear me well? Yeah? Yes, yes. OK, let's start. Um, thank you. Thank you to everybody for being here and watching this, uh, this uh, talk. Um, so I'm going to move directly to the agenda. We have a lot uh, to cover. Um, so, I will begin with the Nava Group, a really short presentation, who are we, what we do, and the product portfolio, and some um, system engineering challenges we face on, um, and then our direction we are moving uh, regarding um, new techniques for engineering and especially for simulation driven. And finally, and it will cover most of the presentation, uh, the business use cases regarding Capella usage and what we did uh, with Capella for the announcement. We developed some add-ons and good news that have been released to the community. So after that, you will be able to download them and use them. So who are we? Naval Group is uh, an international player in naval defense, uh, 4 billion euro the last year in 2021 in terms of turnover. We have more than 50 client navies around the world, um, 16,000 employees full time. And what is interesting is um, revenue in terms of breakdown because 62% of our revenue may, comes from the new constructions and underwater weapons, and 38% and comes from services and infrastructure. So it means we maintain our products and we build as well, we design and build and construct infrastructure to host the product, which means armor. And from a geographical point of view, 70% uh, uh, of the turnover is done in France and 30% uh, at the international. The ship offers. Uh, so we cover surface ships from the medium range, short to medium range uh, surface ship like a Corvette uh, to frigate and almost destroyers class, uh, as you can see in the middle at left, to the big aircraft carrier. Just to give, I, I took some figures just to um, highlight some points. A Corvette, it's 111 meters length, which is almost um, a football field in length, approximately. The displacement, which is somehow the weight, it's 3,000 tons. And in terms of range, it's 4,000 nautical miles. So it means you can cross the Atlantic with a Corvette. And the aircraft carrier, it's uh, huge. It's 261 meters length. It's two and a half um, football field. And it's four times the weight of the Eiffel Tower. At the right hand side, you have the submarine offer. Um, so uh, the Scorpion, which is a conventional submarine, uh, to the bigger size of conventional submarine with bar Barracuda. Um, conventional submarine means it's a conventional propulsion powered, so it's a, a, a gas oil and, and, and battery based um, 
power from electricity for generating electricity to nuclear uh, attack submarine and nuclear submarine uh, which is a ballistic missile uh, at, the, at the top as the bottom right so these two uh, are powered uh, by uh, nuclear power and we are not only a shipbuilder we are also um, manufacturing our own equipments and we also sell those equipments to different marines and to different industries uh, we'll not go to the details we don't have the time and we build also underwater weapons a lightweight torpedo and heavyweight torpedoes and countermeasures and counter torpedoes so system engineering challenges what we face on today um, our systems they must evolve pretty fast now so it means that uh, the operations uh, the operational they expect new business capabilities they expect new operational capability and technical capability added uh, based on predefined schedules um, predefined schedule it makes sense as you can uh, think about it uh, because uh, the, the ship needs to get back to the harbor and we need we need to perform some maintenance at a regular base and we took this time to upgrade it um, each time we can but what is clear is that no business or no operational capability regulation is permitted because as soon as the ship leaves the harbor uh, it's too late uh, we, can, we cannot call it back so we need each time to ensure that everything works perfectly uh, at the first time um, new technology introduction, uh, which is really about managing the technical debt, because uh, a warship, uh, the life cycle is about 45 years to 50 years. So it's a lot, and it's a lot, especially when you uh, look at it from a technological time, especially in the software area, but as well for the communication and as well for the cyber physical equipments, which evolve now really fast. Um, so managing the technical debt is really um, a challenge. Uh, just to give you an overview about it, um, an aircraft is uh, the lifetime is about 30 to 35 years. Um, the only product I know which is which has the same cycle life cycle is a nuclear power plant. Power plant, plant sorry. Um, it's 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 the same. It's about 45 to 50 years. And also a constant increase of uh, needs in terms of interoperability and as well as system automation uh, because less personnel on board. And also with the, it comes uh, with the introduction of, of autonomous vehicles uh, that are engaged now in the fleet and participate uh, to what we call collaborative combat. So it's, it's also um, uh, challenging from a system engineering point of view. So moving towards simulation driven engineering, this is where we go and why. Um, if we apply the, I would say, basic and base techniques, techniques regarding document based engineering and requirement based engineering, uh, which is required anyway from a contractual point of view and from legal point of view from time to time, um, it means that now we need to do differently. Uh, differently meaning that uh, uh, we still need to keep the requirement based engineering but we have to move uh, further and why because uh, this, those techniques they cannot re really keep up with the evolution pace we face on regarding the system engineering and especially because now we have a collaborative engineering national international we have distributed factories and we have different priors onshore, offshore, uh, done at the partner side and on our side. Uh, so it, it, it's uh, um, hard now to manage uh, by being only um, unstructured information driven, meaning document driven or even uh, requirement driven. So we need, we need to move from this paradigm to an, another one. So that's the reason why we are currently progressively shifting to simulation driven engineering to lower the technical risk um, and avoiding to avoid to discover performance issue too late in the construction process. And also we want to optimize the end product to really fit for purpose for a specific task, task of a specific mission. 
and our our in general environmental footprints uh, so involving less materials less raw materials and as well during the ship life less energy consumption um, during its uh, usage and overall product life cycle of life so what we need to enable is to have a short loop short engineering loops between multiple actors internal internal and in externals based on outputs from simulated system behaviors so so having done that we can adjust the architecture and we can adjust uh, the requirements as well or answer to the requirement based on what we did at the simulation level so for this what is clear is that uh, we need a central common model driven engineering and especially the descriptive model it's really essential this is a source of truth it means it's one frame to describe the systems the needs and the solution you already know that very well after these three days of um, capella days um, but the main message is that it's it has to be shared with all system engineers even the ones that I would say usually they don't go to the architectural, architectural model. Uh, it needs to be shared because they need to understand why we do the system, uh, what, what, what is the um, expected outcome of the system at the operational level or at the system level. So it's, it's really key uh, to really have a common engineering process. So really describing the system for a mutual understanding uh, for all involved parties. So it's really a single data source and as well for all engineering domain specialists. I think I'm going to accelerate because um, otherwise I'm going, uh, not having the time to present uh, the Capella things, um, our project. So this is the direction uh, we have taken and, and, and we currently work on. MBSC is a source of truth and coupled to operational simulation functional simulation, dysfunctional simulation, and multiphysics simulation. It's loosely coupled for the multiphysics because it's a bit different. It's, uh, I would say, um, more about constraints uh, on the physical aspects and with the physical laws we live in uh, and with. Um, so it's a bit different from, uh, from the functional and dysfunctional scope, which is about performance, which is really driven uh, by the MBSC and as well um, injected after into the simulation operational uh, simulation. So what we did, we coupled uh, the MBSC with our operational uh, model and, and simulation environment. So we did it in, in 2001 and you are going to see how we did it uh, with one of the add-on. In second, what we did, we finalized it this year. Uh, we built um, a, um, an add-on to, to generate a modelica structure and classes and, and breakdown of the different classes uh, between the physical layer of the MBSC and any functional simulator uh, like Dassault System Dimola or Open Modelica or um, Amesim. And then we can close the loop with operational simulation uh, by exporting an FMI, which is a standard uh, from those simulators and, and run the, the operational simulation uh, within our tools uh, with the real performance uh, we have qualified from a, from a technical point of view, from a model point of view, from a simulation model point of view within, within um, an open modelica, for example. But it's clear that we, are, we want and we are and we will be open standards based we don't want to be locked in into a technology. Uh, so we are now really focusing on open source uh, frameworks and engine and open standards. This year we began some works and it will um, uh, continue the next years about uh, um, uh, interaction between the MBSC using the Altarica language and any dysfunctional uh, modeler and simulation tools. And all of this, uh, the, the, the target is uh, to run all of the FMI and the different models uh, within a co-simulation platform. And as well, we have work in progress. 
Just to mention, I just go back here, just to mention that um, MBSC is a source of truth. Um, and of course, it's, it's data driven. It's not really application driven. So what we want is to have a, a neutral aspect on, on the data we can exchange with third parties and, and, and the different other tools we add. So as well, we, we, we try to convert to neutral data between exchanging them uh, with other software or with, uh, with other third parties. So Capella. Capella is deployed um, in the research and development organization. Um, really quickly, why? Uh, because it's a fast deployment and easy learning curve. It embeds a step-by-step -step method. You all, all of know uh, this, which is Arcadia, which is a, 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 a common method um, really close to other engineering methods. It embeds productivity tools for the end user and really focusing on designing a system. So it's really hiding the complexity of the underlying layer uh, with the conceptual and data model. Uh, so I would say you take the product sheet of Arcadia, Arcadia the one from Capella with all of different levels. Um, now we can really start on with Capella, even if, if, if you need some tra additional training, but at least you can do something you are not completely lost. It's based on open architecture and technology with the EP license. Um, what is really a key aspect? Uh, it's, it's a key aspect for massive adoption. It's available to anyone at Naval Group at an affordable cost. It means that we can roll it out uh, really quickly without having license, licensing fees, uh, which is uh, always a burden because uh, um, um, if, if this is a massive adoption, it costs a lot, uh, and so you, 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 so you can't uh, have a massive adoption. So with Capella, you can, it's affordable. And as well, it's widely, widely spread across the French defense technological and industrial base. So our current landscape uh, on Capella, uh, we deploy it as a in all inclusive bundle. So if you are an engineer at Naval Group and you ask for Capella, it comes bundled as it's, pre as it, it's presented here uh, directly on your workstation, pre-configured with all of the modules and the add-ons. You have nothing to do. It comes as it's presented. So at the right-hand side, uh, we have a couple of uh, external add-ons. Uh, just uh, roughly and quickly, uh, the cyber security one, cyber security add-on. It was a really an early preview, uh, I think, from Thales um, add-on. Uh, we did investigate it. It was quite interesting, um, but we stopped it because it's no longer maintained. So we are going to remove it in the, in the next build. But it's it's uh, for cyber cyber physical equipment. Uh, we 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 evaluated, assessed it, and it was quite interesting. Hopefully, we use as well the filtering add-on. Uh, for doing basic things around um, uh, product line uh, and variant management, but it's it's fairly basic. It doesn't really fit what we want to do, but at least we are using it as as really um, baseline, but really for doing basic things. Subsystem transition. Um, we use it from time to time, not always. Uh, we use a lot uh, the concept of libraries. And we discovered that it can really uh, help a lot. So now subsystem and libraries, it depends on the volume we have of data. Uh, so um, yes, it's, it's, it's really about method rather, rather than tool, I would say. States and modes advanced management, uh, we, 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 we started to investigate it. Um, really useful, I think, uh, really impressive, uh, but quite hard to, to, to figure out how it works. And, and, and so I, I, I cannot talk more about it. Uh, we will see later on, uh, probably next year. Peter for Capella, uh, clearly, yes, we use it. And you're going to see uh, how we use it. HTML generation, because yes, it helps. When someone does not have the uh, Capella installed, um, especially a uh, program manager, project management, and so on, uh, you export in HTML and, and just the browser is, is required to, 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 to see the, the models. 
so yes, it's very useful. PVMT, our PVMT is the most um, used add-on within our bundle. We use it for almost uh, everything <laughs> we have in mind. And requirements, advanced management, uh, which supports the Reiki format. We used it in the past, but now we almost non, no longer use it. And you will see why later on. And at the left hand side, you have the Naval Group add ons. Uh, so the legend, um, no, in green, these are the free add ons we have developed, and they are available for download on, on Labs for Capella. Um, so I'm going to talk about them and, and, and show you uh, what they do and why we did them. We have also some uh, other add-ons uh, we developed, um, which uh, are um, um, proprietary uh, at Naval Group. We don't expect them to, to release them uh, soon or later, which is a Modelica exporter. Uh, we have our own variant for document output. We have a Neo4G exporter to both um, the repository uh, within um, uh, graph uh, database. Uh, we have, um, uh, it's a shared uh, property with OVO, uh, SysML connector in one for the 1.4 version. And we began to script a lot uh, with Python for Capella uh, for exporting data. And obviously, we have a private GitLab. Uh, this is really used on every project using Capella. So you, first use case, uh, it's about interoperability and even more. Uh, so we are going to talk about the CSV converter. So seven use cases. Uh, we call the CSV, CSV add-on the Swiss Army knife uh, of Capella. Uh, the first, uh, first use case, it was about to import existing data assets to prepare and accelerate engineering study, studies. I'm going to go directly to, to this one. So um, what was what we discovered after a few hours of practicing at the early stage when we installed Capella, that uh, we really needed uh, the ability to import and export data out of Capella, and, and I would say in a neutral format. Um, without this, it was clearly a showstopper for us for rolling it out, um, because each time we start a project, um, it's like a, a bottom-up approach. We have a lot of assets, data assets, and we want to accelerate the engineering phases. Um, without having this ability to import our assets, you have some of them uh, at the upper level, a functional breakdown structure, geographical breakdown structure, module breakdown structure, engineering part of the engineering board, and so on. If we don't have all of these assets, um, the, the, the adoption um, will be quite low because the, the engineers would prefer to do uh, as they were doing before. I think you heard one of the talks yesterday of our colleagues from, uh, from Thales, and they said the, the same thing regarding uh, Visio versus Capella. Uh, so we, we didn't want to, uh, to fall into, the, into this trap. <laughs> so uh, we really wanted to have the ability to import data um, for, for accelerating um, uh, the adoption and the engineering, new engineering phases. And as well, after these engineering phases, we wanted to be able to export data to our PLM environment uh, to allow to transitioning to basic and or detailed design phase. So that, that, that was really the primary driver for uh, um, developing this CSV connector. And I, as a note, as you can see here, um, more we have Capella assets because more we are we have projects now uh, running it. Um, more we are able to move toward library management, and we we use libraries as uh, predefined sources of data, um, so they can import directly the sources uh, as libraries within the project and we maintain the libraries within the GitLab, our private, private GitLab. So it's much now easier um, for the engineers to work with uh, Capella without having to import their CSV data. When they exist, it's within libraries as Capella model, but defined as, as um, libraries, right? 
Second use case uh, was to enable collaborative work with partners um, within a consortium. So it's it's um, um, really often that it, happen, it happens. Uh, the context is about uh, when you don't have anything for Capella available uh, for good and bad reasons, but whatsoever, you, you don't have it. You don't have a common GitLab available, a central one, which you can share with different third parties. And you have an heterogeneous, I uh, would say, MBAC environment, not especially Capella, but MBAC in general environment. Uh, so you have different versions of Capella, you have other MBAC tool, and you don't know what to do because there is no common language and no common format to export to or re-import to. And uh, you have uh, issues as well because you need to exchange partial model uh, because of confidentiality, uh, whatever the reason is, uh, and, and also because of industrial intellectual property. So you need to filter out from your model what you want to export and exchange with the partners. So um, what we wanted is to have this ability to import and export, export neutralized data it means technology independent, and CSV is a, a good fit for purpose on this, and, uh, and in, in a best and cost effective way. Um, obviously, there is still a human data management effort. It's, it's not uh, automated. There is, it's partly automated, but you need to have a strong data management and human based effort. That's true. Right, and I just uh, give the example about filtering uh, the, the, the what we call the non-exportable data. So, so it means uh, the data we don't want uh, to share or to send to other properties. So we tag them into Capella as a, as a, with a property, and then we filter this property. We filter it out uh, after the CSV export within an external tool, and here yeah, it's up to everyone. You know, to decide which tool is fit for purpose it could be Excel, could be database engine, it could be whatever. Or even with KL, with Python for Capella, it's it's possible to filter out based on this property. So it was the second use case. Uh, the first, the third one is about importing and exporting requirements. Uh, the context is when there is no use of the Reiki format uh, because of its limitation uh, because you need to make sure that the settings in the different uh, system handling the Reiki format are the same uh, so it, so it's it's really an effort um, it, it's an effort as well to properly export uh, the Reiki uh, from the different system so it, you need a procedure and you need everything uh, depending on the version you work on if it does or jazz or, 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 or PTC right and, and so on. I know it's no PTC now, but whatever. Um, and um, we discovered as well that the requirement object within Capella did not really fit with our ways of working. It's really specialized on, on user requirement, system requirement, non functional requirement, and it's somehow level restricted uh, requirement for the operational uh, layer, for the system layer. So we decided to use uh, property values. To manage requirements uh, because you can have dependencies across um, uh, the different property values and you can um, add dependencies across layers with these property values and you can assign them to any kind of the model object type so it's it's uh, it, it fits our purpose so as well uh, yes yes sorry sorry guillaume sorry to interrupt uh, just wanted to let you know that you, you have a little bit more than 10 minutes left for your presentation and then 10 minutes for questions. Okay. Uh, so I'm just giving you this information so you can manage your time. <laughs> so, uh, the best thank way. you, Stephen. Yes, I realize that I don't have so much no, time. Right. <laughs> um, so we wanted to uh, exchange with partners and with neutralized data or even internally uh, because we, we, we have also different versions of those and, and, and we have jazz and PTC as well. So we, we wanted to uh, have neutralized data and we still wanted to have the trustability link, um, and especially in in all documents we, gener we generate, and as well in, in the HTML generation. So it's a, it's a, an easy way of having the trustability and, and the standard way of exporting uh, data. And Peter for Capella is great to export formatted structured data as a list, of course, not as document uh, in Word, but for Excel. 
uh, especially for the ICR, uh, we, we have, have now some scripts uh, for the interface control list. Uh, so we use Peter for a um, As you can imagine as well, we use it for importing and exporting data from any systems or models, uh, including um, uh, our simulation models or simulation engine. And for that, I will not do, go to so much to the details, but we are using the uh, out-of-the-box property value, and we export them as CSV. Uh, so, so, so yeah, nothing really magic uh, on this. However, for simulation, uh, it needs a mediator or a proxy because you still need to convert um, data to the right data type, uh, float integer, and so on. Uh, so it. it there is a kind of, of um, either semi-automated or automated effort uh, to implement for that. And it's not within Capella, it's outside. Use case five, translate all model elements to create a new language specific. Uh, the context is uh, we have a French team, uh, we have a, a non-French speaker team, and we need and, and um, we initiate a project in France, and then we transfer the project uh, to our team in India, for example. Um, so there is no way out of the box to um, manage different languages uh, within Capella. So we are using the CSV as a way to uh, to completely um, 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 replace uh, French language with English language. Um, using an intermediate uh, database. Um, so it just uh, rip and replace, I will say. Um, so it, it works well, it does a job. And, and we still have one project. Um, and after that, within GitLab, we can have uh, two different branches or two different um, projects. Okay. As a use case as well, it's um, it's extending the mass editing view which exists uh, within out of the box within Capella. Uh, so so it's it's really useful because you can add external automation and especially rules, uh, screenshots that you 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 could see it after uh, the talk. Uh, so especially within within Excel, if you want to prefix or suffix uh, your object, you do it in Excel. You re-import into Capella using the CSV uh, and, and then your model is updated uh, with uh, the rules uh, you, you put into, into your Excel spreadsheet. So quite, quite useful. And use case seven, and it, it's a, the it's a last one for, for the CSV connector, uh, CSV add-on. It's being able to map with a specific property, so um, uh, two different meta models. So here I gave the example of the NATO architecture framework, the NAF, which is really used in the defense, defense industry. It's a bit different from Arcadia, Arcadia but still some objects you, 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 can, you can somehow uh, make sure that you, you still talk about the same thing uh, from the operational layer and system layer with, with the um, NATO architecture framework. And for this, we are using uh, a new property and we specify within, the, within Capella which object belongs to what in NAF so here yeah, I get the example of a resource function. And as you export the model, uh, it's exported as well. So you can then reintegrate it into the other um, model, which supports, for example, NAF, uh, like Cameo or whatever. Uh, and, and you can reintegrate this object as a resource function and not as a, an activity or, or a function uh, coming from Capital. I'm not going to the demo. Uh, I will go directly as I'm really late now. Um, lessons learned. It's very powerful. It solves many business and interoperability issues, even at the meta model level. Uh, but it's not friendly enough for business user. We had to develop uh, um, an Excel spreadsheet with VBA macros to automate the fill in process of the CSV, CSV, CSV files for the data import. Right. It's, it, Okay, so it, it, however, uh, otherwise it works very well. And now we use more Python for Capella for exporting data, uh, and especially, as I said, uh, for uh, interface control list and documents and so on, and requirements and characteristics. Use case two, 
Um, it's a second add-on. It's about reconcile uh, field specialist schemas and MBSC. So it's about the schematic. So what is schematic? Uh, it's um, when you are a field specialist engineer, uh, you work with a specific diagram. It's not MBSC based. It's a standard based. It's, for example, piping and instrumentation, and instrumentation diagram and PFD process flow diagram. And it's really the usual way uh, in the industry to describe an architecture. Uh, so it's really about functions and recruitment uh, located in geographical location of really oriented uh, for a cyber physical system, electric, mechanical, hydraulic, and so on. So it's really a common practice and it's even um, required by some norms and regulation and it's asked by regulatory authorities. So you need to have them anyway. Physical layer, Capella, it does address the same purpose. Uh, so it leads to duplicate the effort of describing the architecture. So we decided to develop for the high level design phase, the capability to Capella to generate the PIDs and PFD diagrams based on the usual MBSC block view. So here it's uh, an example of an hydraulic system uh, with a, a, PI, it's a PID, process and instrumentation diagram. So it describes a flow of material. Uh, yeah, it, it will be uh, um, hydraulic, or hydraulic. hydraulic, yeah. It describes how to control the system and with what, the safety mechanisms, the connection between the equipments, and, and plenty of different characteristics. And as you can see, um, um, it's really for specialists. So I will not go through it because I see the time is running on, but uh, I, you will see later on, uh, uh, you will have the presentation. So it's about rem remotely operating, uh, emergency stop fleet flow. It's uh, enable cross uh, to the flow to cross heterogeneous environment and to finally push and pull something, which is a rubber blade uh, for a submarine or a surface ship. So now we have a bronze level in a hydraulic system definition. But as you have seen, uh, you still need to understand the symbols and, and what they mean. That's the reason why we built this add-on. So um, it gives you the possibility to have a building block within Capella, like usually, and map it to a symbol of uh, to a, a library to libraries with the visual symbols that are used by the field, field specialist engineer. And we have a, a, a mapping and a setting file to say all of that. And it will, and Capella will create dynamically the diagram like a layer uh, on on um, uh, an over layer um, directly on, on the on the diagram. It will be clearer uh, in a in, in an instant. So here it's a catalog. So within Capella, you have a catalog of symbols. It's, an, it's a project dependent, so you, you include it uh, in your main project. So these are all of the figures of the equipment. You want to, um, the visual representation, and it maps with the equipment number and the visual library within a file, within the sitting, the sitting files. So here now you are uh, within Capella, and you have your block diagram and you say, OK, uh, this physical node, are you assigned, are you assigned this equipment? Uh, so it's a property value, it's really simple. And from a menu here, you go to layer, schematic images, and dynamically Capella will convert uh, your block, block diagram to um, uh, to schematic, to schematic, yes, uh, to, to, with, with a specific symbols uh, for um, for the field specialist, right? So really useful. It's really and and you can change the orientation of the different symbol because they mean it means also something. <laughs> so uh, for the engineer, so so you can turn over and flip uh, the different uh, images um, uh, on purpose, right? So. As a summary, you have the uh, physical architecture view with a, with a node, physical node, behavior, behavioral node, and the function. You say, OK, now filter it. I want to see only the physical nodes. And you activate the menu. You say, uh, please uh, convert it to a schematic images or add a new layer on top of it, which is more the, what it does. And it converts it dynamically uh, to a PID schema. 
or fifteen or whatever. And you have several options uh, to add specific text uh, on sure. symbol and information. Right. So lessons learned for this add-on, uh, it really recon reconciles all, all engineering, engineering fields and knowledge into one repository, and this is really what we wanted to achieve. So good thing, uh, the MVSC is really the art uh, of, the, of the architecture, and it's really friendly enough for business users to use it. Uh, we still see an announcement that could be made, could be done, it's uh, about using a um, list uh, by using PVMT, which right now it's, it's not possible. So they need to answer, they need to fill in with the right um, equipment um, uh, number uh, for, for, uh, this, for enabling it. Um, so this is something that uh, we, we could look for. And you are welcome to make it happening. <laughs> Uh, right, so it's really ideal for blueprint phase. Um, however, for realization phase, uh, detailed design, um, it's it's um, it's it works well, but it's more about volume, data volume. Um, the hierarchy of the different models it needs to be really, I would say, crafted crafted correctly, um, because we 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 have a fairly huge data volume at the equipment level. So um, it's, it's more about a limitation in the way Capella handles uh, data rather than, rather than the uh, limitation of the add-on. Uh, so it needs to be well structured, but it's, it's about method. Yeah. And finally, uh, the last uh, use case, it's about the visual traceability across the different levels, operational, system, logical architecture, and physical architecture. So the third uh, add-on, which is what we call the cross-level analysis. So what we uh, wanted to tackle is the, um, is the ability you know, uh, to justify a design um, and trace it back to the needs, meaning that uh, out of the box, we didn't have the possibility um, to really create a diagram that will show you the relationship between a uh, physical function to a logical function, to a system function, to uh, an activity uh, within the operational layer. And it was really missing to go to, to have this bottom-up approach or vice versa to have the top-down approach. So we really wanted to have it because browsing uh, within Capella uh, was, is, is, is okay. Uh, however, you cannot put it into a document when you want to report something or to, or, or, or to put it into your uh, SSDD uh, document. So that's the reason why uh, we made it that way. Um, right. So it's a viewpoint that you need to activate. Uh, it works on, on a diagram in the Explorer or in the semantic browser. So how it works, um, I'm not sure you are going to see well, but whatever. So yeah, I took the, um, the standard model um, uh, that comes out of the box from Capella uh, with, with the uh, aircraft and the passenger and the video uh, display and, and, and media entertainment. And here I am at the physical layer. So I want to see, uh, I selected the physical function, which is a send audio announcement. And I would like to know which operational capability it is related to. So we are in a bottom-up approach. So we select it, um, right-click, and there is a menu, cross-analysis, uh, self-init cross-layer diagram, <clears throat> and a new diagram, a one-time uh, diagram is generating. One time, it means that it's not synchronized uh, with, uh, uh, with the repository. It's just a one-time generation. So you can save it and, and look it uh, see it after if you want, uh, but it will not be synchronized with a with, uh, with workspace and with it other elements. You will have to regenerate it if you do some changes with, with the, within the model. So a diagram is generated and now you can see here yeah, it's a basic example so it doesn't really show the power of this add-on but um, um, I, th I think you understand the concept. Uh, this is a um, physical function I selected and I can see the realized logical function, the realized system function, and the realized operation activity. 
vice versa, I stay on the same diagram here, and now I say right click. I want to know all of the functions that are involved uh, for uh, realizing this activity. So I do the same within the same diagram, cross analysis, new diagram. And now I have all of the different system function and the, and the dependency and the realizing, realizing the system function as logical function and the physical function realizing the logical function. So it's really top down approach. So it works both ways. Last, last word for me. Um, you are welcome to contribute and, um, and, and to make the atoms uh, alive, still alive in the next versions of Capella, uh, as well to add new um, uh, functionalities. Uh, we accept volunteers. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Thierry. Uh, sorry, Emmanuel. And uh, I'm going to start the question. So first question. Um, have you looked at the Maple MBAC for Capella? I think we did. Um, I think we did. I think we did. But um... I don't remember the reason why we said no. <laughs> so, um, yes. So we did no. look at it, but I, I don't remember why we didn't choose it. Okay, no worries. Um, right, next question. Uh, what are the Capella versions compatibility with the add-ons Naval uh, decided to outsource? Yeah, good question. Um, so now, um, it's um, it's compliant with the one one dot four dot two. Mm -hmm. We did publish as well for the five dot one dot zero on the GitLab uh, on the team for Capel on the um, um, what, what's the name of the um, uh, GitLab. Uh, 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 Labs for, Labs for Capella. Yes, thank you very much, Stefan. Yeah. Yes, on the Labs for Capella, we did release them as well. Uh, for the 5.1.0, uh, but now we faced on um, um, manpower difficulties to release uh, them on, on, a, on a weekly basis or monthly basis, <laughs> because there are a lot of uh, Capella versions <laughs> running on, and, and, and so so we don't have this capability uh, right now uh, in terms of manpower. But we accept new volunteers uh, to upgrade them. It's not a huge work uh, from one version to an another version. It's just uh, we we did some adaptations. Um, it, it just cost us some some hours. So uh, from from one minor major, major version to another major version. Um, for minor version, it's it's no effort. But we still need to recompile everything. Everything. So so we don't have the time of doing so. Understood. Um, this one, I'm not sure it's a question, but I'm sharing this. So just wow, how to bridge the gap between methodologists and the domain specialists? Uh, this idea can should be extended to any other technical design domains. Uh, so pretty interesting feedback. Yeah, um, we worked a lot on this, and we still continue to work on it, and especially for um, uh, what we call um, uh, non-functional requirements, uh, which are really, uh, I would say, a pain in the ass to manage, <laughs> um, because it, it, it touches uh, system installation or subsystem and components and geographical location and, and so on. So, so uh, yes, uh, it, it needs to be extended and by the method as well, and not only by the tool. Yes, I agree. Understood. Um, okay, completely different question. Are people doing the simulation models comfortable to get a structured black box model to refine? And how do you manage the, to, the reuse from past projects? Right, so here we've, um, it's, it's clearly two different um, engineering specialists. Uh, we have the architect, which defines the descriptive, which um, 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 creates the descriptive model. Um, it, it identifies or she identifies uh, the right building blocks, the right components it, where he wants a simulation to. 
he exports it, and then the the simulation specialist uh, will 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 take care of filling in correctly the model within the simulation within the uh, simulation environment and add the equation, mathematical equation, and so on. So these are really two different populations. So they talk together at the descriptive level, but after that, it's more about a, a domain specialist, uh, um, the, the, the simulation part. Um, so it has really less to do with descriptive and more with mathematics, rather more than with mathematics. Uh, so these are two different uh, people and population. Uh, concerning the reuse from past project, um, as well um, as we are using GitLab for for all simulation project and models, and and GitLab for all um, Capella descriptive model, um, we have some gateways uh, um, um, be between both worlds, right? So so you have the history, you 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 can reuse uh, some of the data or some of the models you are using the past as projects. So yeah, to answer concretely the question is yes, they are really comfortable to get to get a black box model as a descriptive model because uh, the um, simulation engineer doesn't really care about the details about the descriptive model. So yes, he's really happy to have a, a black box model, and this is what he wants. Okay, interesting feedback. Thank you. <clears throat> um, does cross-level analysis allow traceability across multiple distinct models achieved uh, using system-to-system -system transition, for example? Not yet, no. Okay. Um, but if you use libraries, yes, it works. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Okay, question from Paul. Really interesting presentation that is close to how we use tools. Uh, question one, has any consideration been given to reading P and ID PFDs into Capella? And question two, like Michael's presentation, using, a, using change control, any thoughts on using the model to uh, aid impact analysis, for example, tracing up layers to logical functional capability? I think this could be aided by your use case three implementation. Right. So, so question one, uh, it's a good point. Um, however, there is no standards, um, and so we didn't find any good standards. And um, even if within the the because uh, schemas are PFDs and PFD and, and PIDs are either done in in Visio or in the uh, Autodesk suite or in our PLM environment, uh, but none of them can export in a standard format to describe what, what the PNID is as a schema and but as a, as a, as a, as a um, data based, a data based and not data based. <laughs> uh, so, so there is no standard for that, or we didn't find any good standard for that. Um, so um, uh, for, for these three uh, tools, I talk about uh, like, like Visio, Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD, and, and the PLM we, we currently have. So, so no, we were not able to do so because the source is not able to give us readable data, whatever they are, um, to import to Capella. Question two. Um, it's it's yes. I, th I think I think you somehow partly answer the question about the use case free uh, implementation about uh, the um, 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 cross layer analysis tool uh, it's clearly yes uh, because it, it's, it enables us um, to re to really trace back to the operational layer so it help, helps us as well for this functional case for identifying which equipment um, is located where and if it fails, what, what will go uh, at the operational layer? Which, which main activity we are going to impact or which system function we are going to impact if we lose the equipment? So, so yes, it can be done as well. And especially with PVMT, with a colored um, diagram, when you, you can... Uh, uh, diagram layer. Um, yes, with the diagram layer, which you can overlay 
uh, your diagram based on properties. Uh, so it, it, it can help a lot. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And um, we, we are running a little bit over time. I'm, I'm just going to select a couple of other questions and then, and then I will have to switch to the next presentation. Uh, so have you faced any limitations in compatibility issues with uh, when using PVMT? I would say not yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. OK. And uh, last question, maybe. Maybe not the easiest one. Could you explain it how you transition to Medelica simulation from Capella? <laughs> uh, no, for now, I don't want to disclose this. Uh, I just want to say that we generate uh, Modelica uh, um, classes um, based on rules uh, so we can inject it into our um, Modelica environments and modules. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Guillaume and Emmanuel, uh, for this uh, very uh, detailed and rich presentations.